Okay, guys, so I'm back here with a video regarding a user situation, or I should say a viewer situation. He is confused on how to connect the chain of 70 volt speakers to a TOA BG1120 amplifier, which, by the way, I sent him an amplifier because he needed an amp, so he is confused on how to connect these, so I might as well cover this with all of you guys. Those of you that are new in this hobby. Now, of course, this is not a complicated thing. This is by far one of the easiest parts of a 70 volt system that you don't really need to overthink, but I guess it happens to some. So, also, I'll cover the UTI 1 situation yet again with the TOA BG 1120. This applies to the BG 10, 1015s, 1030s, 1060s. And obviously the 1120 covers those line of total amplifiers. So before I get in depth here. So we have two wires here. This other end. This is going to be my mute. So I got COM and NO. As you can see. COM is obviously the common part of the relay built into this. And NO means normally open. That is what you want to use to mute your amplifier. So see these two mute terminals? So if I sh put a jumper across these two to short it out, it'll mute the audio going into this amplifier from aux, the aux ports, and the program terminals. And I noticed they're the same viewer that made this request. I noticed he likes to land his page wires the tip in the ring onto the program terminals. And there's nothing wrong with that, but the problem is if you're gonna use the mute revision, it will mute your program and you won't get no page. Use the tell. There's a reason why there's the tell terminals there. So we'll cover that. For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna use three Rowland speakers because they're easily accessible and I don't feel like ripping all my, my entire system apart. So let's say this is tapped at 1 watt, 5 watts, and maybe 2 watts. This is, you need to, that's, so you have to tap your transforms accordingly. Now what I prefer, and this is how I do it on my system, just to give out tips, tech tips here. I usually like to tap all these at 5. These are all currently tapped at 5. But every one of my speakers I have is either 4 watts or 5 watts with an exception of horns horns like that guy in the corner there and that duquesne I have those tapped at 7.5 that's the sweet spot I find to have you know the proper sound balance not have one speaker drown out the rest of them or horns so let's get going here try to get this in frame here because I know I want to make sure you guys can see what's going on so let me line this up. Because this is important. So we're going to start with the easy step here. Let's connect your 70 volt speaker. So I said this is 5 watts in our imaginary case. 5 watts, 2 watts, and 1 watts. You tap it accordingly on the transform using obviously the common and whatever respected tap positive terminal that you have. It varies by manufacturer, so let's wire our speakers together. So we're going to gather all my blacks, which by the way, this is the common, and this is the 70 volt coming out of the back of the amplifier. The 70 volt terminal, so let's gather all my blacks slash grounds. Let's tie them together with our imaginary wire nut and we're going to take our home run line and we're just going to connect everything together there and then we're going to get our positive wires or positive 70 volt wires and in my case I have this white here that is positive that's just positive in my case however you have your system or your speakers configured you follow that scheme back to your amplifier and this is my positive 70 volts which I'll show you in the back so there's my imaginary wire nut all my connections are twisted together 
So there's my home run line back to the amplifier going to however many speakers you got in your setup. It is not that complicated. So there's a com right here and there's 70 volts. Those are my lines screwed into those terminals. So now that we got that part out of the way, this is your whole setup here. That, that and those. Five, two, and one. So that is three watts and that is five watts. So you're using give or take eight watts out of this amplifier with just these three speakers. Now always keep track of your taps over time. You can either write it with a Sharpie like I've seen one viewer do or maybe get maybe make take notes because you don't want to exceed the output power of this because you want to leave I try to leave about 10 watts of wiggle room on these just because it varies. You want to leave a little bit of headroom. That is what is recommended by manufacturers and professionals. So now we got that portion out of the way. Now let's move this back. Now let's cover the UTI-1. So you can see those terminals, so that's what we, I want you guys to see this. So we said these are my mute my mute revision lines. So we're gonna land the, these two wires here on mute, like like so. So here are my mute lines. Right there, all connected, going back to the relay of the UTI-1. Now, here comes the tail wires. This is my, this is the page signal lines. So this solid brown, you see, that is my ring. If that's going to be my ground or my common, we are going to use the tail terminals. Do not use the program if you're using the mute. Once again, I repeat, do not use the program terminals if you're using the mute revision feature. And this is my tip. This is my tip. Tip is positive coming off the UCI one. So we're gonna land it on hot. So there you go. That is how you connect your UTI one paging interface with the Toa BG 1015, 1030, 1060, and 1120 amplifiers. Those are, This applies to all those models. And then you're going to go to your amplifier and you're going to kind of play with your controls. So obviously balance your tail out so the volume, until you, the volume is desired for you guys. Or when you guys don't have microphone feedback from the phone. So yeah, this is how you set up your mini intercom system on a, using a TOA integrated amplifier. And I hope this helps some of you viewers out there that have this, that encounter this confusion.